What is up YouTube? Welcome back to Fred's Full Throttle. Today's video is going to be how to install a steering damper on a 2010 Ducati Hypermotard 1100 Evo SP. What is a steering damper you might ask? A steering damper is designed to protect you from head shake, something that's pretty dangerous at higher speeds, especially on the track. And so I bought a steering damper and it basically prevents the bars from going back and forth if the bike is getting kind of inconsistent traction or at really high speeds if there's any kind of imbalance. And so I bought a Scott's steering damper off eBay and it basically is a hydraulic device that has a lot of resistance here and it's an adjustable amount of resistance. But basically this goes, this replaces the triple clamp for the bars right here. And then this kind of arm that goes out goes onto a bracket here, which then this is mounted to the frame of the bike. And I can show you right here. This is the same piece, but the stock Ducati one. And this, you know, has the key in the center, but basically pop out these two bolts, replace the steering clamp here. And then the, the device itself basically sits right where my fingers are. And then it anchors to this, which is mounted and bolted directly to the frame. And that ends up protecting you from any sort of violent head shake by having a tunable amount of resistance when you turn. You have softer to the left and then firmer to the right. And so you can adjust this to how much uh, resistance you want. So anyway, uh, today's video, I'm gonna be installing that. So let's go. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you have the right tools for the job. So you need a 10 millimeter socket, which will be for the acorn nuts, which are on the top of the kind of key receptacle there for mounting that. You're gonna need a six millimeter Allen, which is gonna be for the triple clamp uh, kind of bar locks. Um, you're gonna need an eight millimeter Allen, which is actually for the large bolts that are inside. You can just see it right here. And then you need a 15 millimeter wrench, which is gonna be for the large, nuts underneath where the handlebars mount for as those bolts go through there's a nut on the bottom here which you're going to need to uh, have access to and to, to loosen and replace next you want to put a towel or something else soft to protect the gas tank and kind of any of the body work here um, just in case anything bumps it along the way so we're a day or two later than i was last filming my video i've gotten the towels and protection on the bike and I started to go through and look at the torques that I need to have the various uh, six millimeter and eight millimeter bolts be, and realized that while I do have the Allen wrenches for that, my torque wrench wasn't gonna cut it. I don't have a way to attach my torque wrench to my Allen keys. So I ended up going out and buying a new torque wrench just so I have both kinds. I haven't had one of these before, but this was pretty cheap on Amazon. And I bought an entire hex set that has all the metric and SAE uh, Allen keys that I would need, but they can now go on a torque wrench so that I can torque things to the appropriate tension. So that was really important, and I am glad that I took the time to wait and do that rather than just sort of half-ass it and try to tighten it with my hands. All right, first step, we need to loosen the handlebar mounts. So we're gonna loosen those with those run. Quite tight. All right. Take that off. Next step is to wrap the handlebars in some sort of protective blanket because we need to roll everything forward so that we can work on the handlebars. Keep the tank protected. Oh, there's not a lot of slack here. We're gonna actually switch. Use the moving blanket for that. And then put the towel over the, the uh, instrument panel. And just sort of set the bars up here. Make sure nothing's bending too much. All right, the next step is we want to actually pull these out. So we'll get that on there. That's our eight millimeter. Then we get our 15 millimeter wrench, pop that on the bottom. 
like so. And you'll see we've got a moving blanket here. There we go. <laughs> dropped a few things. It dropped two washers, one that goes inside on the bottom and one that goes under the nut. And then actually there's a spacer which goes underneath the perch itself. So it sits kind of like that. I always find it's helpful too to put everything in the order that it went on. Um, the actual kind of top triple clamp would be what goes right here. But you can see the two washers and the nut. You can see they also marked so that everything was all lined up when it was tightened. And that's a good way for you to make sure that things stay tight. We're gonna do the other side. Same exact process. This time I'm gonna try not to drop things. Here's that. So that actually goes right here. And then you have your triple clamp washer and then nut. So I've got two sets of hardware. This is what came on the bike. These are the ones, these are the ones that came with the, uh, the actual steering damper. And one of the things I noticed is that they're all the same dimensions. Everything's the same size, but the threads on this are a little bit corroded. Whereas the threads on my bike, especially since it has such low miles and was never stored outside, the threads are a little bit better. So I'm going to use the original OEM equipment and now I'll have a backup pair in case I ever needed it for something. All right, so the next part is we're going to put our bolt through. We have our new perch, so we're going to put that through like so. You put one of these washers and you'll notice, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Basically, this is recessed under here. And that goes in, and what that does is that takes the pressure from this little kind of raised center uh, piece there, and then the bolt goes through the triple clamp, and then on the bottom, uh, you'll have our big washer and our nut, but we're not gonna do that just yet. So, the key is, you sort of get everything all lined up, like so. Use my fingers to sort of hold that, Make sure I don't pinch any of the lines. And now it's in place. Now one thing I'll note, the steering damper is actually already attached to this. I may end up having to take that off before I can do the actual installation of the key area. And in fact, that looks like that'll be the case. Now we're gonna put our washer and our nut on both sides. All right, so we're just gonna put this just a little tight. We're not gonna tight torque it down just, just yet. There we go. Just snug, we're not torquing it down just yet. We will in a minute. But first I wanna get both kinda even. There we go. Those are hand tight. All right, now we're gonna tighten this to 18.4 uh, pound-feet of torque which is 25 newton meters. So got our torque wrench on, I've got it already adjusted. That click, that means I'm at the right torque. Rotate it so we can do the other side. There we go. Easy peasy. So I decided to take this off. Now one thing to note, use an Allen wrench for it, but this right here is pretty sharp as my thumb can attest um, I, off camera, I had tried to adjust it and as the wrench loosened finally, my thumb went right into this little point here and took a good chunk out. So just something to be careful of. So I'm gonna remove that because it's sort of in the way for that uh, kind of the key receptacle work that we have to do. And this is a five millimeter uh, Allen wrench. So this is the actual unit itself. And you can see here's the arm. And on most bikes, it actually mounts forwards and this would be pivoted around to the other side, but on the hyper in order to fit, it's mounted what looks like upside down. And then this is the dial here for adjusting from softer or harder for the resistance. And this is what got me. So next, we have to actually unplug the immobilizer for the key, which plugs in on the far side here, 
but actually this wire comes down and it's this plug right here. So we want to unplug that. So I'm going to do that next. And you can see it is now unplugged. And what's kind of cool is that there's a little tab here on the frame for this to kind of stay in place. So the immobilizer is now uh, removed. Next, we're going to remove the two acorn nuts that hold kind of the key assembly on here and they are 10 millimeters. There's two. So I had to be pretty careful when I was pulling this off because I needed to get the entire cord intact. And specifically this gray ring in here, um, you can't really see, it looks like plastic, but that actually has a wire running through it and it somehow uh, ties into the key. So that's the immobilizer. And I needed to pay attention to how this was routed through the steering stem so that I can put it back at the end. Starting to have quite the, uh, quite the number of parts here between all the different things uh, that I needed to do here. So here's our old immobilizer and here's what's gonna replace it. So we have to pull the ring in here, pull it out so that we can put it in the new one. So I'm gonna do a dramatic recreation of removing this ring. Um, the ring is basically plastic this plug right here is attached to it directly, and you gotta be really careful. It's brittle plastic, this is 13 years old, and you really don't wanna break it. You can buy new ones, but they're uh, probably a hassle, and the best bet is if you can not, not break it. There are two tabs. There's this black one right here, and then there's another one right here. That The first one, I weaseled a screwdriver in, and just turned it a little bit to push that back. And since the plug is actually part of this, this cable doesn't disconnect from this, I was able to pull just slightly as I went and get it up through there. And then what I did is I took this pair of really sharp kind of bend angled tweezers and stuck them into the gap underneath and kind of worked my way around underneath. And then up from the bottom here, I was able to basically just push as I went around and just sort of gently work this out. And I put it back and I probably shouldn't have done that. It's now a little bit of a hassle again. Oh, and that was off camera, but there we go. So this pops out. Now there's a little bit of residue on here. They say it does get sometimes glued in depending on which bike and which production run, but it's a very thin glue and you can just wiggle things back and forth a little bit and be able to, to pull that out. So that was probably the most stressful part of this whole thing. All right, we're back at it. Now it's probably two weeks later. And I'm going to explain why. Welcome back to Fred's Full Throttle. I realize that this video sort of has a jump in the middle and there's a good reason for that. And I'll, let me explain. So in the last part of this video, I was going through, I had disassembled everything. I was in the process of starting to mount the brackets back on the bike. I'd pulled the immobilizer ring off and it seemed fairly straightforward, but as I was going through, I realized that I didn't have a pretty important piece. And I do now have that piece, but there's quite a story with it. If we go over here, and we look, this is the bracket that is getting mounted on the bike. You can see that these two screws, kind of pilot screws, go through here, and that kind of centers everything. And then the damper fits right through this middle hole, and everything mounts here. Now, there's a problem with this. You'll notice this groove here, and there's kind of a relief cutout. You end up needing this piece. And let me just say that this is probably the most difficult piece in the world to get because I actually have the very last one ever for this bike. So this was quite an ordeal. I reached back out to the person who had sold me the steering damper on eBay. I had asked before the purchase if it was complete, if it had all the parts, and they said, yes, it does. Now, going back to them, they said, you know, to the best of our knowledge it was, and that was our response. But when I went through the directions, which are on my laptop here, I discovered that that piece was missing. It's called the Delrin, I think it's the Delrin Immobilizer Collar. And anyway, this piece is made so that, and I'll show you. So this is that piece, and this is the immobilizer ring, which in the last piece of the video I think I showed. And you'll see there's a cutout for the plug to go right here. 
and this fits inside here. And importantly, this is Delrin, it is not metal. And you'll see there's a groove cut out here, there's a cut out here, and then this snaps in here. You line everything up. There's even an indent here so that the damper can move unimpeded. But this piece is missing. So after I reached out to the person on eBay and they said they didn't have it, I was like, okay, no problem, I'll reach out to Scott's. So I reached out to Scott's, I emailed them, and I didn't hear anything back. No problem, I figured they're probably busy, it might not be a big company, so I called them. Thankfully, their support was great. I got in touch with somebody immediately, he's like, let me go check our inventory, and unfortunately there was some bad news. He said that they didn't have any more of those, and in fact, they hadn't made any in many years. The guy I talked to, it sounded like, was actually one of the fabricators who had built those originally. So what to do? You have a new part that you want to put on your bike and it doesn't exist. Well, thankfully, Scott's was really, really good. He's like, give me your phone number. Let me go see if I can find anything in a parts bin, a warehouse, whatever, and, and let me get back to you. I wasn't holding out a lot of hope at this point, but to my absolute surprise, about three hours later, he calls me back and he's like, Fred, you're really lucky. You are getting the very last one ever made. <laughs> Literally, it's the last part. They have no more. This was out of some sort of parts bin or in their back storage. He didn't even think they had it originally. So I got it for 17 bucks. It was shipped and I had it within a few days. So now I can continue on the install. All right, so the next step here is to install the security ring. And there's a really important part here is it has to be fully seated inside so that it's not touching any of the metal of this or else it won't work. All right, so first thing is you want to obviously line this up and kind of get it as centered as you can. Um, and then it's a very tight fit. So I'm just sort of going to work away, my way around the edge. Try to center that as best I can. All right. So it's in, not all the way seated, but I've centered the plug as probably as best I can. Then we're going to slowly just push it deeper into the socket to get it fully seated. All right, it's not perfectly centered, but that actually doesn't matter. Now the way that this is going to work, and you can see, let me get the last little bit of that centered. I'm using my fingers. I don't want to use anything metal. I don't want to accidentally break it because it does feel like it's fairly brittle plastic. Oh boy, that is a very tight fit. All right, with a bit of fiddling, I was able to get this. It's now mounted, and I am pulling, and this won't come out. The challenge here is this little gray plastic thing and this little gray plastic thing, and those are like little clips attached to the uh, immobilizer ring, and that they were kind of caught on this collar, and you have to... I use a screwdriver to kind of get behind them, and just the littlest bit of twisting pressure, and you can see I can just bend that out a little bit. Okay, so as I was mounting this, I heard a little crack, and in here, behind this clip, and I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but basically right here, here at the end of this, I can see exposed copper wire. There's sort of an outer black ring of plastic, and then this inner gray one, and sandwiched between them, it looks like there's an induction coil, um, so just like thin copper wire. So, I'm using E6000, uh, it's a non-corrosive, uh, adhesive, it's flexible, it's temperature resistant, non-flammable, and specifically non-corrosive and safe for electrical components. So, I am dabbing just the littlest bit in here because I want to make sure this stays waterproof. Copper obviously corrodes pretty quick and you don't want to deal with wet electronics on a Ducati. I will certainly say that the reputation precedes itself. I realize this is a bit messy. There's not a lot I can do about it. It's an incredibly tiny space, but this should do the trick. All right, the E6000 is kind of dabbed all over where that crack was. I don't see any other spots. This side's totally fine. I think it's because of this little guy. Just wedge it all down in there, spin this thing around, and then push the tab back to sort of pinch it all shut. That'll take 24 hours to dry to waterproof, 
but within 30 minutes it'll be pretty well set up. Now reading in the instructions, it actually did mention a press fit here with a little blue Loctite, so that's what I'm gonna do. Get some blue thread locker. You want blue because you can eventually undo it if you ever need to. Just putting a few dabs along here. Actually, this will sort of help it stay waterproof from above other than the obvious gap there. I've got the indent here lined up with that hole pretty good. And the inside you can see this is sort of the final product. We've got the two tabs kind of tucked out of the way so they can slide through. We've got the E6000 kind of waterproofing our kind of inner stuff here. We've got our plug and our sensor going in. Now this is looking a little bit more like an ignition. There we go. All right, so next we need to just test fit this. Make sure that the collar fits around both of those. I'm just sort of keeping the cord out of the way. And everything should fit completely flush. Basically all along here should all be flush because this collar, this metal part that I just added is gonna take all the force from the steering damper, which is gonna be here. And then the main kind of sliding pin is gonna be in the center. So that has to fit flush. It does say that occasionally on some of the bikes with different build, build dates, some of this isn't quite flush and you may have to do a little bit of grinding in order to get this flush. Grinding on this bracket, not on the bike. All right, that looks good. So I'm gonna thread the cable down below, plug it back in, and uh, we'll go from there. I should also note, I put one of the uh, top clamps on for the bar just so I can move it and kind of get things out of the way a little easier, but also more importantly, so I don't bend any of the wires or get any of the uh, reservoirs leaking. Um, you'll see that there is such a close fit here and actually where this pin goes, this part of the uh, triple clamps has a completely perfect clearance across there. So nothing binds or touches. So it is very tight tolerances. So that's important to keep in mind. All right, so from this side, you can see I've got this seated, it's on nice and tight. And then I've routed the cable here. So this is that immobilizer cable. We're gonna go under this guy, which is where it was before. And then just press and wiggle a little bit. And that was a positive click. There was a nice yellow gasket there that keeps this waterproof. And then this is tucked kind of up out of the way. All right, so the next thing before I go any further, I need to make sure the immobilizer is working and actually lets me run the bike. So we're just gonna start it for a second here, make sure everything works. That looks promising. All right, success. All right, so the next step is to tighten the acorn nuts, which are these guys. Um, you wanna use them with Loctite and you wanna do six, pound, uh, six foot pounds of torque. All right, so first thing, just gonna put a dab of Loctite in here. Make sure it's got a little bit of coverage. It's sort of just finger tight for now. So the instructions say that this is pretty important to make sure they're properly torqued because this bracket, as I had mentioned, is specifically what holds the steering damper's force into the frame of the bike. It, it kind of, it's what transfers that force. So if those are loose, that's a real problem. I'm gonna use my old torque wrench because this goes to two and a half pound increments. And so I'm gonna just a notch past the second line there. Um, my new one, I think it starts at 10 foot pounds, so I can't go from there. So one bar, two bars, just a scotch over that. Two lines and just a smidge over. So those are at the right tension now. Grabbing a paper towel here to just sort of dab up any of that Loctite that we don't need. All right, that almost looks like an OEM setup, that's pretty good. So this is the steering damper, and the way that this basically works is this arm on the bottom has configurable amounts of resistance. So when this is on the bike in this orientation, which I should note I think is upside down from how a lot of bikes have it, this arm is gonna attach to this, which is, I think they call it the tower pin. And so this has a, it's sort of a keyed pin and it goes in here. And then the pin is what anchors it to the bike, to that bracket. And so the bottom here is basically smooth. 
and it says to lightly grease it. So we're gonna do that. All purpose waterproof grease from Bell Ray. Thank you kindly. We're literally just gonna grab the littlest bit here. Just a little bit of grease. Get our paper towel. Use that to kind of coat everything. And so I'm sure it'll just provide a little bit of lubrication, but also uh, keep things from getting um, moisture directly on the metal, at least to an extent. All right, so we're gonna do that. We've got a nice little coating of grease on it. Now we're gonna take this and drop it in the center hole here. And it slides in nicely. All right, next step we're gonna be attached Next up, we're going to be attaching the steering damper here, but the bars are in the way. As I mentioned, I put them there just to keep things tucked out of the way. So we're going to loosen this. All right. So the next step, we're going to take this. You need to line this up pretty closely. So that they, so the two mounting holes here correspond to these two holes in the uh, new handlebar mount. And so you kind of line everything up. And you can see there's just a perfect fit here where this isn't going to touch anything, which is nice. I'm just going to put these screws in finger tight for the time being, just to mount things. We are going to lock tight that once we have things uh, mounted a bit more permanently, but right now I just want to test fit and make sure everything lines up. Now what you're looking for here is you need to make sure that this is not binding or touching. And so, this, so you're going to turn the bars one way, turn the bars the other way, and nothing should be touching or binding. And it's, I know it's hard to see from the camera, but if you look, and we'll get in as close as we can here, you'll see that this arm is above the collar. It doesn't look like that from above, but if we look from the side, you can see there's no binding, no touching. Nothing is contacting anything except this uh, main tower pin is touching this arm, which goes into the damper. Um, and so you do want to turn the bars all the way one way and all the way the other way. And I'm watching very closely. And thankfully, not only is the movement smooth, but nothing is touching anything else. So that means we are properly adjusted, which is nice because this actually came from another hyper. So whoever had it before had done the adjustment themselves and the dimensions are the same on mine. We're gonna blue Loctite the screws that go in. Just make sure we're good there. Kind of a difficult angle to film, but get that guy in. I'll tighten that down a little bit after. I'll we'll pop the other one out so we can lock tight it. Again, we're using blue so that we can put that. Again, we're using blue so that we can uh, remove it later if for any reason we needed to, whether for maintenance or anything else. Now the instructions don't give a torque setting here, so I'm gonna just go hand tight. It is steel screws and aluminum, so you wanna be really careful. So I'm just doing hand tight. The Loctite's gonna keep those things from moving. It does say to check those bolts after your first ride or two, just to make sure nothing is backed out. So we're good there. All right, so the bars are now in the mount and we're gonna put the cl top clamps on. I have blue Loctite at both of those. Pop these in those holes. So those are going in nice and smooth. The reason you want to use the new top uh, clamps is because the stock one is connected. It's all one piece. And it's going to block your view of your adjuster, which you can adjust while you're riding. You can get a finger, even a gloved finger, back down in there. So important to mention. And we'll do the other one. Same thing, blue Loctite. Pop those in there. So I do need to get on the bike to adjust to the position I want before I tighten everything down. 
So this allows it to free flow. And there's little marks on the bars. I don't know if the camera is picking that up, but that actually helps you figure out side to side adjustment. So the next step is I got on the bike and I adjusted the bars to what feels good. If you look over here, you can see these marks. So I can measure the distance between the two sides. And that gives me the ability to kind of adjust things. I can move the bars easily, both directions. And I confirm that there's no binding here and there's no binding underneath. There's nothing touching what it shouldn't be. All right, these go to 20 newton meters of torque, which is 14.75 pound feet. So I've adjusted my wrench. I don't know if that's gonna focus, but it's at 14.75. And you wanna tighten these in a bit of a crosshatch pattern so it puts even torque throughout the handlebar. And this is steel going into an aluminum uh, casing. So you wanna be very careful not to over tighten. There's my click. There's my click. There's my click. There's my click. All right. One quick thing to mention is you actually want to start, go all the way to the hardest setting, all the way clockwise is what it says. So you'll see this goes around a couple times. And then you want to go eight to nine back from that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll go nine. And double check if things bind at all. No binding. And then it says that sort of, you can go softer or harder from there. Um, but that was the suggestion with the base valve, which I believe is what's inside mine. And th what this does is this adjusts the valving inside the unit for the flow of oil for the arm that's going back and forth inside. Um, inside there's basically a cavity here with what looks like a paddle. And the adjustment of the valve is as the paddle moves, it's compressing oil and the valve offers relief that allows the oil to route to the opposite side. And so by opening this to softer, you're getting a bigger opening, meaning the oil can move faster between the two sides. And then as you go to hard, it's closing off that gap so that the oil has a smaller area to move through and it slows down that paddle moving through the oil. It's a pretty ingenious design. I'm super impressed with both the build quality as well as the simplicity versus you'll see a lot of them that have a lot of steering dampers that have, they kind of look like a piston or a little hydraulic arm and they would bolt somewhere over here and then they would bolt to your handlebar and it's basically a piston going in and out. This seems to be a more compact and in, in my mind, a better engineered design. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Then the directions say, play around with it a little bit. As you're riding, adjust it, move the bars back and forth. There should be no binding. And then as you, you know, encounter any head shake, you can tune it out with this knob. And that's basically it. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And until next time, Fred out.